We're now live. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for waiting around. Um, that's my bad. I was going through technical stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining and tuning in. Today, we are very excited to be joined by Kathy Reed. Thank you so much for joining us today. Happy to be here. <laughs> um, so we've not really done a nationals recap before, okay. um, but we have basically the podium that we're going to go through and then other skaters uh, within the discipline. And mm -hmm. if anyone in the comments wants to, you know, have their say for free and we'll throw them up and we'll get to some other nationals <laughs> at the end as well. Okay. Early comment from James. <laughs> That's very sweet. <laughs> Um, so we'll get started with, uh, the best discipline in my opinion, high stance. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see such a competitive, um, ice dance. It was here. It was an exciting event. That's for yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of emotions too. Uh, so it was, um, it was it, it was something since uh well since i know everybody and you know i'm i'm rooting for everybody um but of course i'm also rooting for for my team utana and masaya and that fall on the rhythm dance was just so unexpected uh they were training so hard for this event and coming off of good skates at golden spin so um yeah it was it was a shock to everyone i believe so <laughs> <laughs> but uh but they pulled through and the free, they skated a good strong free. So, um, so I'm super proud of them. Um, but all teams, they all skated uh, super well. They all like, you know, didn't hold back and just went for it. So it was, uh, it was a really exciting event to see. I'm sure. So <laughs> for Tana and Masaya, they're a relatively new, mm -hmm. you know, team together, and they've yeah. been at nationals in other capacities before. But how did they handle? the pressure and how did you kind of get them ready for Yeah, for I think, I mean, I think, I guess they knew the pressure, but I don't think, I think Masai especially didn't realize exactly what this pressure was going to feel like until he was there competing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was interesting to see how they both handled it and um, how they also went into the free and how they reacted after the free too. So um of course, it, it was a great learning experience, I think, for them and to compete under this type of pressure. And they're going to have more of these experiences, I think, for sure. So um, it was a really good, uh, a good comp for them. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, after after the free, after after the kiss and cry, he just let out all his emotions. And, <laughs> and uh, it was it was, you know, it was nice to see. It was nice to see, you know, him kind of release all his uh all his emotions after everything and really, you know, pull through. So, <laughs> yeah. With um, a lot of the scores ending up very close to each other and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the top three not having the same placement in both programs, what do you think this means um, or, or shows with the state of ice dance in Japan and, and the direction it's heading in? I mean, to have three couples have this uh, this close rivalry is, I think, really exciting. Before, it was always usually kind of two couples. Um, so to have three couples, especially two new ones, just come up all of a sudden after like a half a year of skating together and be neck and neck is really, I think, exciting for everyone to see. And it's a good, um, it's a good, I think, uh, media standpoint for for um for all of Japan and also all of the world to like kind of tune into and so um it makes the competition more exciting it makes people want to watch ice dance more and see who comes out on top and uh um it also pushes the the teams as well to keep working to keep training to motivate them to to win so i think it's a really good thing really good thing <laughs> And then all three of the medalists um, will be at four continents. So that's, yes. kind of, that's exciting, but also yes. another, yes. another it's another kind of another nationals again for them. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, 
the world's uh, the world's selection hasn't been decided yet. So I'm not sure if it's going to be decided before Four Continents or after. So we'll see. But uh, in any case, it's another chance for um, for re redemption for my team, <laughs> but also uh, <laughs> for another chance for all three teams to go against each other. Since uh, yeah, I mean they only went against each other at uh, Nishi Nihon, which is their sectionals, and then here at uh, nationals. So it'll be an, it'll be nice to have all three teams compete against each other at an international ISU event. So, yeah. yeah. And great for them to get that experience for sure you know, to be at a championship, to be, to get the world standing points. To yes. Be I know. I mean, they haven't, all three teams haven't had much opportunity to compete at all this season. Um, my team, Utana and Masaya and Azusa and Shingo, they only competed at golden spin just a couple of weeks ago. And then um, um, Misa Toe and Tim only competed at NHK. So it's just one international. So it's really not many chances for the teams to compete, to show them, to show the world what they can do and what they're capable of. So I'm grateful that the Federation decided to send all three teams the four comments. Especially because Golden Spin doesn't have any streaming. So exactly, it's hard for yes. anybody <laughs> to like get invested no, in to like see them. Watch a team. It's, exactly. <laughs> Their international debut and no one got to see it. No them. one can see it. <laughs> <laughs> a little sad. Yeah. But uh the both teams skated so well and got the points easily. So I'm I'm super I'm super glad and and happy for them and happy for all three teams to have the chance to compete at four continents. That's great. That's really great. Yeah. Um. What's your uh? Or when it was announced, what was your thought on the '80s rhythm dance? And did you see, um, sort of any music that you had in your head? Did you see any other teams sort of be able to do that? So when I heard about the '80s, I was I was super excited because I was born in the '80s. I grew up listening to 80s music. So my parents would play it all the time on the radio or in the car. And so I knew the mu I knew lots of different types of music from the 80s. And so I was super excited. I didn't know I didn't know exactly um, how to translate it onto the ice right away. So it was interesting to see. I watched lots of videos, music videos and stuff. And um, it was a really interesting to see all different uh, teams programs and their interpretation of the music. Um, and since a lot of teams use the same music as well and to see the, the variety of it was really cool. Um, so it was interesting to like go into all different types of music and genres and, uh, but uh, I went with rock for Utana and Masaya basically because uh, Masaya was this like, is always this kind of wild character. And so I really wanted to showcase that. And since he just teamed up with Utana, I wasn't sure exactly if she could pull this off, but I, I knew from watching her previous programs that she's such a strong skater and, you know, she's really open to try different things. And so I, I kind of um, went on this, on this, went on this, uh, genre of music and uh yeah they skate it super well they have fun it's a challenging program and uh every run through they're out of breath but uh <laughs> but it's super fun and not many other i don't think any other team has really used those um those selections of music so it's really cool that uh it was kind of their own yeah <laughs> but uh and something else that was really cool was that um there was such a difference in everyone's rhythm dance. You yes, had like a film soundtrack, you had Super Mario, you had a rock one. There was just a wham. You had yeah. like, it really represented like a lot of different, different things. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure, for sure. I mean, yeah, especially with the, the Japanese teams, even in the free, like everyone had completely different programs. And so I think that's also was really exciting to see. Yeah, I mean, different characters, you know, brings out uh, different uh, different styles in the teams as well. And so it's very interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, I think before we move on to pairs, um, some lovely comments for Kathy <laughs> um, from Mary Lou. Kudos to Kathy for creating the best. Oh, that's of the super year for sweet. Pursuit. I had so much fun making that. Uh, <laughs> well, he's such a fun, <laughs> fun skater to choreograph for. And uh, I wanted, I knew I needed to bring out something cool. And 
And when he chose, I gave him a selection of different musics and I said, which one do you like? And he chose the jazz machine. And so I decided to create like a little story with it as well. And, uh, and something fun with the chair that he could bring other skaters in to, to uh, perform with in the gala. And so, yeah, it turned out great. And he made it his own. Like I made it, I made the program in two hours with him. I kind of, kind of went through some movements and stuff on myself. And then I brought it to the table with him and he just, he could just move right away and just get into it. And it was, it was super fun to choreograph with him. Uh, yeah. So I'm glad it worked out. And I forget where it was, but the gala with him and um, he brought Shoma and Sota with him on, onto the ice. And I talked with Misha G later at Nationals and he said that he went out to help find us sunglasses for all three of them to wear. And so it like those photos from the gala, they look so cool out there. I saw that the photo of them all sort of like posing yes. against the brick yes. wall with their glasses and yes. they, it, it looked like they were like an album cover. Or yes, something. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it was super cool. Like it, it looked like a model shoot. Like it looked awesome. So I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> it was fun. Um, it was fun. Couple more comments. So glad you're covering Aww. Japanese nationals and with Kathy Reed, no less. Um, <laughs> yeah. Very like, lucky to have you oh, super sweet um yeah i um oh, i hope so too i really hope so too i mean from where chris and i were skating from that point you know where there was you know not much media at all we couldn't even get coverage of our entire program onto tv so for now people to like actually watch you know the entire event no less and then uh um, have media coverage, have interviews, like it's great. It's, it's, it's still slow, but it's getting there, you know, it's getting there. So I think it's, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah. um, smiling hearing about Kazuki, that was Cup of China, Misa G yeah. uh, with the glasses. Yes, no, and, it was great. Um, Aww, another comment saying, Japan so is so lucky to have Kathy Reed. <laughs> Uh, love her artistry, kindness, and positivity to all skaters. Oh, that's 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 like perfect. That's really, I'm all about positivity. I'm making you know a great positive environment for all skaters and coaches. So it's super, it's super fun. It's hard at times, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think. Oh just before we move on. Uh, Sharon saying, Kathy, I remember a picture of you and your family taken in front of the love sculpture in Philadelphia some years ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I think the first time we took a picture was in Tokyo, I think. And uh, yeah, when we saw that, we said we had to take another picture again. So <laughs> <laughs> all about love, all about love. <laughs> um, I think we can move on to pairs. Okay. Um, so, uh, only one team yes. obviously competing um, because of an injury for Rikun Ryuchi. So, Yunasumi, that's what they're called in Japan, and mm -hmm. they also just started in May, the same time um, uh, the two new Ice Dance teams started as well. And uh, so, I work with them, I work with Utana and Masaya, and there's also a junior pair. Um, who both competed in singles at this nationals event and they skated very well as well. Um, so I, I, every day I work with all three teams. Um, I'm not a pairs coach. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> teach pairs lifts, death spirals, twists. I, I cannot, but uh, in areas where I can help them, I do my best. Um, so I choreographed both their, their programs. They're short and free and I found the music as well. I talked with Bruno about the music selection. So he was definitely involved and, um, and I help teach them skating skills and some parts of the lifts and like the pair spin together I can help help out with. But uh, other than that, I'm I'm there for support in any way that I can um, via on the ice or off the ice with their partnership. Um, but this team has uh, has come a long way. Uh, you know, for for Yuna, this is her first year doing Paris and she has no, you know, prior experience, but Sumitada has had experience with uh, with another partner. And uh, so it was it was interesting to see how her progress developed from the start. And she's done incredibly well. I mean, it's 
it's been just half a year and she's landing throw throw triples you know and her her individual jumps for doing side by side jumps with sumi has incredibly improved as well like i remember the first time she came to our rink she wasn't able to land like many triples and now she's very much more consistent and so it's uh interesting to see how um how she trains and and her uh her motivation to do and her determination to do better every day. She she's a very, very hardworking skater. Um, but yeah, their performance at nationals was just mind blowing. It was just mind blowing. Uh, brought me to tears at the end of their free. Like I, I didn't expect to cry, but I also didn't expect that performance as well. They blew me away. Um, they just skated so well, skated so well. They just, they delivered what they could do. And I'm glad that they did that. I'm super glad. Um, before NHK, they, uh, they had, uh, an accident from a twist. So they had a very bad fall and they got injured. And so it was just hard timing and, you know, but right before NHK as well. And so it just, they just didn't have enough time to recover and to, um, to perform their best, I think. And it was also a lot of pressure, a big ISU Grand Prix event as their first international so under those circumstances, like I, I understand that it was it was very challenging. But after NHK, they got to rest and recover. Um, they're still recovering from the injury. They still have issues with it, but um, they were able to practice and and, and get back into the groove of um, what they feel is normal. And uh, they were able to deliver that at national. So I'm super proud of them. <laughs> Yeah, so much pressure for them to be kind of yeah. representing Paris in Japan as a new team like exactly. that while they're yeah. you know, the reigning world champions are out. Yeah. It's like, exactly that's big, big shoes to be. Yeah, there are not that many couples, and so they already have that pressure. The federation is just looking at them. I mean, of course, they have the good you, and um, and they were very excited to skate with them at nationals. So it was, it was kind of sad that they couldn't, but um. You know, but I think they, they're handling that pressure well and they're just working hard every day. And that's the thing with these Japanese skaters. They they really they have just such a great work ethic. Um, they don't they don't make excuses. They just, you know, come to the rink every day ready to work. So it's, it's great to see that, you know, they can deliver what they they practiced. So, yeah. How did Yuna get into pairs? Um, what what brought her to the partnership? Um, there was a tryout, like a pairs tryout. Um, I forget. I think it was after Worlds or after World Team Trophy. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, Bruno was here in Japan. And uh, and so he had like a pairs tryout with the Federation. So anyone who was interested could come and join. And so I think uh, that's also where Saya Lucas started, you know, teamed up and, and started doing pairs in junior. And Sumiko, and I think that's where he met Yuna and decided working with her um, based with talking with Bruno and everything. So from there, yeah, she she lives in she's from Sapporo, from Hokkaido. So she moved here by herself to um, to train with Sumitada. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a big leap. But I'm, I'm really glad that there's more. Um, yeah. More efforts to build. the Exactly. Uh, I mean. If the yeah the federation really needs to have some sort of tryout or seminar to bring people together to you know promote uh interest because it's 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 still hard um singles is still very very popular here and i i clearly understand why um but they have so, so many talented skaters that could do well in in other disciplines like pairs and dance and so um i think you know the more opportunities there are for for skaters to try and to see what it's like, the better it'll be. Um, with pairs, I mean, everyone here in Japan, they just have such great jump techniques. So, I mean, if they're interested in pairs, they, they should go for it. They really should. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Hopefully more teams will develop in the future. And I think I heard at least that Lucas is gonna do pairs full time now that he had said that after nationals. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, Lucas decided that this year's nationals was going to be his last, and he performed so well, made me cry as well. Since I've worked with him for many years, um, so but he has such a talent for pairs, and he really wants to to try it. So um, I'm so glad he made that decision. Sorry, I didn't read that comment that was there. What did it say? <laughs> yeah, just some of. 
Coming yes, out. yes. I'm not sure about Saya. She may still continue doing uh, singles. She's still a bit younger. Um, but uh, Lucas, yeah, has decided to do pairs full time, and um, they work hard every day too. And uh, you know, they don't have a coach right now in Japan, so it, it's it's challenging as you know they're both new to the the pairs discipline. So it, it may take some time, but uh, they're both also making incredible strides their first year together. Be great to I, see if they can um, uh, get to junior worlds. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, they need a double twist for it. So um, they really they have all the other elements, um, which you know they do fairly well, and they they can land throw triples. So it's just uh, yeah, getting that double twist. I think hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember a quote of uh, Daisuke uh, last year when he said that he like wants to be the inspiration for you know skaters to try and switch discipline yeah. if they can and yeah. um i know internationally a couple of people have quoted him as as being that inspiration but do you think we're starting to see that within a uh, japanese ice dance and similarly with uh, riku and uh, ruchi for pairs as well uh-huh um well i i i really hope you know, I really hope that people or other, you know, younger skaters can can see, you know, Daisuke and uh, and Diku Yu and other couples as inspiration to try. Um, being in Japan, I still haven't seen it quite yet. Uh, you know, I still still getting hard. It's it's still hard getting um, kids interested to try it or even to want to even think about it. <laughs> um, it's still hard. People when they think about skating in Japan, they think singles. That's all they think about. And also that's where, you know, the majority of uh, of coaches are in that discipline at rinks. So um, there are not many, there are not that many dance coaches. There are not any pair coaches in Japan. And so, you know, that's also an issue. If you want couples, you need to have the environment, the coaches. And so um, it's, it's still, it's still hard, I would say. Um, I really hope. I really hope that in the future more skaters will be interested. Um, but it's it's hard. Is Narumi Takahashi involved with these teams at all? Or she, she was, but uh, she's also doing so many different other things. And so um, um, right now she's not teaching pairs, but uh, but she's she was at uh, nationals and she was commentating and doing lots of media work there, helping to support pairs. So I still get to see her and, and talk to her, so which is great. <laughs> I remember last year, uh, Bruno said that he thought that the change was going to start coming more um, sort of ironically, but like when Riku and Ruchi retire if they go to teach in Japan that they he thinks that they will be really great coaches. I really um, think so. I hope so. I hope that uh, they both decide to to teach in Japan, teach pairs. I mean, that would be a really great thing for the future of Japanese pairs because um, there's there's talent there in Japan for pairs. There really is. And so um, yeah, I really, I really hope I can see, I can see them teaching in Japan. <laughs> um, the last couple Blue Mon Ice shows at our, um, at our rink, at the Kinoshita Academy rink, he was, they were skating there and uh, helping out uh, Sumitada and his partners at that time. And so it was great to see that. Yeah, that's great. Well, I mean, and, and with dance, you know, you're an example of that. And it just, it seems like there's often it's that like almost second generation of, you know, someone has to be the, the ones cart paving the way, but then maybe it's they're then able to help the next generation get further. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of work. It's hard. Um, I wish I have more ice dancing students that I could teach. Like I, I love doing choreography, um, but I think my passion lies in teaching ice dance. Um, that's where, you know, that's my specialty. That's what I grew up doing. And so I wish I have more students to be able to 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 teach and to um, develop more teams. But uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Um, just get to a couple of comments. Amy saying, so glad they had a good free skate after a yeah. tough go NHK. Excited to see how they progress. I'm so excited too. Yeah, I'm so excited too. I think they really 
match and skating style and lines and, and speed. They just have such incredible speed and ice coverage um, that, uh, yeah, it's like mind blowing. Sometimes I tell them just slow down a bit, like <laughs> take it easy, but they just go everything with full power. And um, yeah, it's great to see. And then um, uh, someone else basically Aww. echoing that they have a lovely connection and presence on the ice and hearing about the injury makes their performance at nationals even more impressive. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's also why I teared up a bit because, you know, I, I saw, I was with them, everything that they've gone through, the, that injury, the accident, and then all, every, their emotions, you know, competing at NHK leading up to that, how hard it was. And, and then coming back and just, you know, getting into to just hard training every day. And so those performances were just were just wonderful to see. Just wonderful. Just so happy to see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'll quickly answer this. Um, Rika Ryuchi, I believe, is still aiming to compete. Uh, yes. Well. Yes. Um, yeah. I yeah. I heard that they're back onto the ice training. It's just they weren't like I guess ready to to compete at nationals. And so I hope that they'll be in in good shape for Four Continents and Worlds. Um, so yeah. I'm looking forward to see them because I saw them at um, Japan Open the beginning of the season, and they skated both their they skated their new short there and they're free. They skated both programs and they they skated them both beautifully like no issues but i saw that he had a he had an injury and he he was um yeah in pain and so um yeah. i'm glad that they you know taking care of it um you know it's better you know they're getting older too so it's better to just like really take their time and get you know and to recover and come back so yeah I hope. <laughs> different pairs men with um back or shoulder injuries that have recently and it's been and that have been the kind of thing where like you try to come back and then not quite and it right. seems like very it's smart better to take the time take you need time. to and to yeah fully recover um yeah and that's you know also what chris went through he didn't he kind of rushed to get things in because we had competitions but you know once you get older you really used to just take the time you need to fully recover come back in good shape um that's seriously the best way it's it's tough um, to stay out of competition, but it's it's the best way to do it. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I saw them at Autumn Classic, and it seemed like they um, were some. It was clear, you know, at the time I didn't know that he was injured, but it was yeah. Clear. It was clear that there was something. Yeah, there was something themselves there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully um, they'll be back. And um, yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Uh, they're great. They're a great, beautiful team. And so, um, yeah, I'm, great to, I'm excited to see them. <laughs> um, we'll just circle back to dance very quickly because we okay. have a question. Um, Masaya and Utana have wonderful connections, not only their skating, but also their personality. Do you contribute in helping their connection and communication in any ways? Um, I... For them, actually, they they clicked from the very beginning. Uh, from their tryout, they just they just both felt comfortable. Um, not just their partnership, but like their skating together. Like everything just clicked. It was one of those rare things where everything just worked. It just felt right. And so they decided like right away, just after a couple hours skating together, like, yeah, we want to do this. I mean, we definitely did sit down and talk about everything because it's a huge commitment. Um, but they really decided that they wanted to do it. They both had the same goals in mind. And this team, they have just such a strong work ethic and also such a strong drive to to compete and to be the best. Like they set out from the beginning that they wanted to win everything that they could this season. They, they wanted to go for the top. And to see that, also, I think really helped them, you know, improve as much as they did, um, because we made two programs just in the summer as, as fast as we could, and getting them ready to compete at uh, at sectionals was such a was such a hard, grueling schedule. Um, I mean, they didn't get those lifts ready. They by even by August, we finished we finished choreographing the free the end of July, 
and still putting the program together in August and the lifts weren't there at all in August. Mm -hmm. So like getting those lifts done in that short amount of time before, before October was, was insane. But they, they work hard together on ice, off the ice, they talk well, they communicate. So, so far I haven't had any issues with them. They just, they come ready to work every day. Um, but I'm always there for all of my couples um, to talk uh, about on ice things, about off ice things, about partnerships. Um, I'm very open with my couples. They should be open with each other to communicate about all things and not be afraid to. And so, um, yeah, um, but yeah, they're, they're doing great. <laughs> they're doing great. So I think we'll uh, throw it to the women. Okay. Okay, there we go. Um, I think it was a really great women's event. It was. It was, yeah. I mean, all events were great. Like I watched everything and uh, it was exciting. I think every event was exciting to watch. Um, but with the women's, like, I, of course I knew Kaori Chan, she was going to be up on top. She's had a great season and she's been very, very consistent as well. And Mal being as talented as she is, I knew she would be up on the podium. Um, um, so, and then Monet was a surprise. I, uh, you know, she's had a rough season. She just switched coaches. She also had an injury as well. And, yeah. you know, switching coaches, switching jump technique and everything, new environment, it's always an adjustment. And so, you know, to see her struggle at the Grand Prix is a little heartbreaking because she's such a sweet girl and uh, she tries and she works so hard and uh, it's been great working with her, doing skating stuff, skating skills. Um, but to see her compete two flawless programs at Nationals was just uh, was just great. I'm so proud of her to pull through like that. Um, and then, yeah, Mao, I mean, what can I say? She's a champion. She's uh, just so talented. Um, the short has been, I think, bugging her since her junior nationals here in Japan. She's always having some little mistake in the short and uh, it was unfortunate here at nationals. But, you know, I think as she's getting older too, she's understanding the pressure, you know, of staying up on top. And it's hard. It's hard on a little, you know, a young girl. Um, but she has such a strong mind and you know, she comes back with skating a free like that, like, you know, this isn't her first time doing that. And so, you know, she's just only going to get stronger and better from here, I think. And uh, yeah. yeah, just wonderful to see. And Kaori, I mean, she's just incredible. I think she's like the definition of a beautiful, strong woman skater. Like, uh, I think it's so cool to see that out on the ice, you know, that strength, that power, um, that maturity, um, it's just, yeah, she's just everything. And her smile, her energy always, it's not just on the ice, it's off the ice at every time, you know, when she's warming up, when she's, you know, out talking with media, like she's just always on like that. So it, it translates onto the ice and in her performances. So it's great to see. Yeah, she's one of the skaters that makes me wish that I spoke Japanese because she always seems like her personality is so wonderful. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but I, 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 I've been grateful to have, you know, translators or stuff, you know, helping us to do mixed zone interviews and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I, I always feel like I would love to know to know more about what you yes. say. Yes. I know there was like, I think at the final, there was this one question they were asking everybody, like, who's who's the funniest person on the Japanese team or something. And, you know, the majority of people said Kaori. And I'm like, yes, I could totally see why. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like me. <laughs> I thought that was super cute. She's yeah. great. Who <laughs> was um, photo bombing the uh, at Autumn Classics, the two um, Canadian girls were silver mm -hmm. and bronze. And they were very, like, nicely standing for their, their photos with their Canadian flags. And she yeah. would go to the crowd to get a Japanese flag and, uh -huh. and so she was skating back and she was kind of like <laughs> you know behind them and, and, just great so and the um and then when the uh when Kaya um and Justine turned around they were like they started giggling because they had just been saying how much you know they look up to her and she's this icon yeah. and she was just goofing off behind yeah. them the whole time so it was it was a, one of the nicest moments honestly of this season was that like little bit of that 
you know, when you get to see the, the little bit of the skater's personality. Their yeah, their character, the personality shine yeah. through. Like, I, I love that. I think that's such an amazing thing. And, you know, it shows it shows the differences in skaters and also it, it helps understand the skaters, you know, personality out there when they're performing on the ice. So it just it makes a big difference, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I was so happy for Monet as well. I, she's really one of my favorites, and it was hard to see that that she was struggling so much yeah, earlier I this know. year. Um, has it been things been getting easier for her in practice? Like, were you surprised that she did so well here, or did you feel like, oh, that's on the trajectory she was on? Yeah. So I I haven't been teaching the singles at the academy for a bit from October. And so I haven't seen her practices. Um, I was focusing mostly on the pairs and dance. And so I didn't see exactly how she was doing in practice, but I, earlier in the season, I saw that she was struggling a bit. Um, but uh, uh, leading up to nationals, I haven't seen her practices. So I don't know, but, um, but when I saw her practice for her performances at nationals, I was, you know, I was, I was surprised and I was very happy for her um, because, you know, she's such a hard worker. So, yeah. I love her short program. It's really fun to see her, yes. um, you know, she does the elegant and lyrical thing. So uh -huh. well, but I love seeing her um, try to push outside of that a little bit. And um, I think she's doing a really nice job. Yeah, no, it, it fits her. Like she, you know, she's such a happy, bubbly person, and to have some sort of different kind of style and character, a dancing style, like I think that really suits her well. And uh, I'm glad she went for it. And she's not afraid to try different things as well. Um, I'm sorry, I'm my my mother and my dog just came home, so I'm just going to go quickly to a different room. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> okay. This is the, this is the thing. It's the the holidays. Every holidays, yes. Holidays. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can hear her like walking on the floor. So I think that it's going to be a little bit <laughs> distracting. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, super happy for Monet, and um, yeah, I, I'm really, I'm really happy that she's on the world's team and that she's going. So that's great, 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 great. <laughs> yeah, and Hannah as well for the world. I mean, not the podium, yes. but for the world's team, and yes. um, I think that's really well deserved. She's kind of been up and down, but you know, in in amidst all of those ups and downs, she's actually been one of the most consistent. Exactly, over exactly. I mean, she had a very, very busy season so far, you know, lots of events and, you know, very difficult jumps in the programs as well. And, uh, you know, it's it, there's a lot of pressure there as well, but she, she skated well um, at the final. She skated a good, strong free. And, uh, and I think this free really is, is a good program for her. It suits her very well. It's it's one of my favorite programs, I think, this season. And uh, and um, I think she can feel very confident in it. And so I'm glad she can, um, that she has another chance to go to Worlds and compete there. So she's super talented. She also works so hard. And, uh, you know, I, I've known her since she was little. And so to see her grow and develop and improve um, is such an amazing thing to see. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so and I really exciting. like her short program a lot. I think it's it's been interesting. I think for both her and for Mao, they have the the, the short programs that Caitlin Weaver made yes. for them that are really fun, but yes. that were definitely like Different. a swatch for them. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. they're like you can tell that it's like it it, it sometimes that's challenging because it's not like you're like oh I'm comfortable with that. So then mm -hmm. if I'm stressed about my jumps, it's like okay no they're trying to do both the program and the jumps and sometimes yeah. it's hard, but I felt like in the moment that I've, as I've seen Hannah over the season, it seems like she's really growing into it. And the moments that she is just like really into the program, mm -hmm. it's so great. So I'm, I'm really hoping that this like ambitious track um, will eventually work out with her. I mean, she's, ideally the triple X. always had that though. though. So yeah. yeah, I'm really, I think Caitlin is amazing. She has so many cool ideas and uh, to see her work, 
at our rink the, this past summer was just amazing. And I love her energy and her ideas. And uh, I absolutely loved all the programs she choreographed for um, the skaters at our academy. And they're different, they're interesting, they're cool. Um, some of the free programs that she made for Ayumi Shibayama and also Ikura Kushida are, are masterpieces. Like, I just think they're so unique. They tell a story and I just, and whenever they skate the programs, I can't, wa I can't stop watching. Like it's, it's just so cool to see. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see more works from her, but uh, I'm also, I'm also glad that skaters in Japan aren't afraid to try different styles, different, you know, stories, different types of music and movements. Like it, it makes the sport more interesting to watch and it also pushes, you know, the, the boundaries of, uh, of skaters and what they're capable of. And um, it's only, it's only going to be better for them and make them stronger in the end. And so um, make them a more well-rounded, versatile skater. So um, yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. Very cool programs. <laughs> um, who else stood out for you in the women's field? Uh, let's see. I mean, God, there were so many skaters, <laughs> <laughs> so many skaters and so many, you know, talented athletes, uh, just one after another. I mean, uh, Mako Yamashita and Mana-chan, Kawabe Mana. Mm -hmm. They both skated very, very good shorts. Uh, free was a bit hard for them. A lot yeah. of people here I know, but uh, yeah. um, I haven't met, seen them skate in a long time. And, you know, they've also both grown up and matured. To, so to see that, um, to see that strength and maturity on the ice was very, very nice to see. Um, yeah, I love Mana's style as a skater. It's it's a shame she was so disappointed after the free yeah, skate. Yeah, I know, and I feel them because I, you know, I know them, and I've I've grown up seeing them, you know. Uh, so it's 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 hard. It's hard. Nationals is such a Japanese nationals is such a hard event. Um, I think a lot of the skaters have said it themselves in interviews. It's like it's the event with like maybe the most pressure <laughs> to skate and do well. And it's at the end of the year. And so it's, you know, it's like the peak competition of the year. And so it's, it's a lot, it's a lot physically and mentally. So yeah, I, and it's a very emotional event, I think too. Um, I also liked Yuna Aoki. She's also such a strong, talented, beautiful skater. Um, yeah. And there's that junior girl, Lena. I forget her last name. Uh, yeah, but she's also uh, Uzono. I'm yes, yes, right. yeah. yes, yes. Um, yeah, she's such a an amazing, beautiful skater. So strong. Her jumps are beautiful. Um, and yeah, she's going to Junior World. She was named to the Junior Worlds team. And yeah, her performance at nationals were amazing amazing she just right. looks so fearless when she's on the yeah. ice it's like yeah she like, just, she it. just has nothing to worry about she just, yeah. she just does everything exactly. she's meant to do she's like right there you go that was easy <laughs> i know like everything looks like flawless easy for her and you know and she's also choreography too as like a 13 year old to be able to kind of commit to that choreography in that way i was so impressed and it's and it's different it's different choreography different types of music you know you would think for a young girl, something pretty and, and light and fun. But she, you know, she went for like the harder kind of styles and, and more dramatic music too. And I thought that was very cool and uh, different for a young Japanese skater. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see how she'll develop um, and grow. Um, who else? <laughs> That's so many. You mentioned Ayumi and I, I really thought that her programs in her free skate especially were one of those that like people you know if people were just sort of paying attention to who were the podium contenders they might not have seen but that I definitely recommend going back to. yeah yeah um, and yeah. it was also really great to see Mako who I hadn't you know I, I, said, no, oh, I haven't seen her yeah. in such a long time and it made me think like oh wow like I really hope that she can get you know a senior B or something out of this yeah. it would be great to see her back on the international exactly. stage again exactly it's been a while seeing her and you know, she's had rough seasons and her jumps are just not there. And uh, and she looked stronger. She looked more fit this season. And so it was really 
and she had more determination and I think in her eyes and her programs were beautiful. Her free was like this kind of different style of Carmen. So I, I really enjoyed that. I thought it was cool and different. Um, yeah, she's a, yeah, she's a fun skater to watch, I think. Um, but uh, I was glad to see that my Mihara did well here as yes. well. You know, she's kind of trying to get back from injury and so that it wasn't necessarily you know, I didn't, had super high expectations for her, but it seemed like a big improvement. Since but she skated so, so well, like skated yeah. so well. And, uh, you know, her skating is always so light and lovely. And she has such personality too, in a different way than Kaori. And, um, and both the short and free, she skated so well. And so um, I'm so glad she'll be sent to, to Four Continents and, you know, she'll have a chance to compete again internationally. Um, but, you know, she's gone through a lot of things. Um, so to see her skate like that and let out her emotions and, you know, her smile, like, it's just, it's so wonderful to see. She's such a sweet girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I love seeing some of the skaters. I mean, obviously she and Carrie are both, you know, ex have been incredibly successful in different ways, but I, yeah. it's also really great to see, um, you know, even in this really intense field, skaters have, some longevity and to mm -hmm. realize mm -hmm. you don't have to, you know, peak right away and stay exactly. at the top forever and like that. Yeah. So I'm yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, she's the definition of that after, you know, some, you know, medical hardships and everything, she was able to come back and, and skate performances like that. That's, that's the, one of the hardest things to do as an athlete is to come back and be able to perform at that level and, and well, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. It just goes to show how strong she is and um, yeah, super, super happy for her. No, it was great to see her performances. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've had a, a lot of nice comments in, um, so I'll try and run through them. Okay. Um, Amy's saying we need like a 21st podium for women. <laughs> I know. Um, but, at least a pewter. I know, like, I wish, I mean, because there's just so many talented skaters and they're all so, you know, they're such beautiful people and they're all so sweet and, you know, and I just can feel like their, their heartbreak when they don't skate well, or I feel their heartbreak when they just miss the podium by like a couple points, even though they just skated the best program of their life. Like they could never, they couldn't skate better than that, but there's just so many great skaters. So it's just, ugh. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, Mary Lou saying yeah. that Yuna's free skate was the one that brought uh, them to tears. Yeah, yeah. No, it's such a beautiful program. She's such a beautiful, strong skater too. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah, yeah. it just goes to um, show, show how strong they are and how talented. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. My name yeah. becoming one of the faves. Um yeah. a question. Um, is there someone from the ladies that you're surprised that didn't make the podium? Um, SL found uh Mako delightful and the, the short program was incredible. Mm. I'm not 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 surprised that they didn't make it because I just know how how strong the field is and I I knew that uh, I knew for sure Cowdy and, and Ma would be on the podium. So the third, the third spot or the second spot, whatever, um, was up for grabs. But I didn't, I didn't. I mean, I knew Hana was a strong skater, and you know, if she was on, if she was able to land her triple axel in both the short and free, I knew that she'd be able to to land the spot. But you know, I just also know that it's just such a, it's just such a hard event. I think more mentally than physically. And uh, it's just basically whoever whoever had the best programs of the night, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so it wasn't that I wasn't surprised that someone wasn't didn't make the podium or anything. It's it's such a hard event. It's such a hard event. Yeah. It was good to see Rinka uh, try the triple axel again. So I'd say no, yes, she I'm super it. proud so of her. She, she was so yeah. close to, to I landing know. it. I know, yeah. She, you know, I'm glad she went for it. You know, it's it's a it's a hard jump to keep 
to keep up the consistency of, as, you know, as you're getting older as well. And, uh, you know, the fact that she's still going for it, she's fearless, she's strong. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I love her to death. She's such a sweet girl too. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, she's getting a great, great short as well. And so, um, yeah, very, very proud of her for doing that. It's hard. It's hard to keep up. <laughs> I was interested to see that Wakaba also went and did the um for a triple axel here as well yeah. which yes. was, was nice yeah. to, I mean I'm like I I love that she's being ambitious in yes. her comeback like yeah. whether or not she ends up w- using the triple axel consistently competitively yeah. like I'm glad that she's you know, really going for yeah, it. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, because it's, it's such a high level of competition here in Japan. So it's like, if you don't have that, that, you know, that drive, that motivation, just even go for it. Even if you, if you don't think, you know, that you're in the best shape or whatever, like that's the mentality here every day in training. It's like that you go for it, go for it. So it's the same in competition. So it's, it's cool. It's great to see that. It's absolutely great to see that. Um, Laura saying Meko was such a pleasant surprise. Yeah, also me familiar too. with her before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I saw her in junior. She was super talented. Loved her programs. It was different. Uh, so, but yeah, since then I haven't seen much of her. And so to see her skate here at nationals like that, like it was, it was great. It was great. I was like, wow, you know, she still got it. <laughs> she still got it. <laughs> I remember um, seeing her back. So- Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go, go, go on. I was going to say, I remember seeing her back at um, the Canadian Grand Prix in um, 2018, which Mm -hmm. I think is still her, like, highest um, scoring event. Um, And that was the very first competition that I had ever been to. And and now that feels like that feels like decades ago because things pre and post COVID feel like that. But um, it. So yes, it definitely, it, I was realizing, okay, well, no, she's, it's not that, you know, she's still very young and <laughs> she's all of that, is, but yeah. um, it was great to see her back. Um, and I remember she had the, uh, I think my least favorite piece of music I've ever heard anyone skate to um, at the time that it was like a very, it was like a sort of opera. I remember it. Opera. I, I love that program. I love that music. <laughs> See, I, like, I just thing. it just twinked oh something God. in my head. I was like, wait a minute, I remember that program. But that's what's so that stood out for me and draw yeah. and drew me to her when I first watched her. I'm like, oh my god, who is this girl? Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. Mihoko Sensei choreographed it, and I'm like, oh, love it. I loved it. Yeah. And I normally and I usually I am a huge fan of her out of the box music yeah. choices. Yeah. I'm glad that she went for something odd. That particular one, I remember just feeling like, Ooh. But, <laughs> like I hear you. Like, to listen to that and train that every day is oh something. God. No. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that too. <laughs> but she really stood out. And she was like out of nowhere. She was amazing because it was yeah. like you know you had like I was like. Tuktamishva and like Medvedeva and all of these people there and it was like oh wow she's you know so yeah anyway, very very happy to see her back yeah no that's great that's great <laughs> um SL saying I uh, mentioned in Marin sad that she couldn't say goodbye in the way she hoped with injuries and all but very happy um to have seen her skate for the last time at nationals yeah, she, you know, she posted that she got injured in, in one of the practices before um before the short I think and so it was just unfortunate and uh yeah she couldn't skate the way she wanted I think but uh but I saw her she still went out there even with the pain and you know she wanted to skate in front of everybody so I'm glad that she was at least able to do that and um and uh, I don't think this is you know the end of her you know I think you're still gonna see her skate in some way and so um she's such a talented beautiful skater like just so unique and uh her skating is just effortless like i remember teaching her and choreographing for her and she was she just could do anything and she'd get speed from like one push like i don't know how that's possible <laughs> but just like this incredible speed and flow and um yeah it's her talent and you know she'll she'll never lose that and people will always you know appreciate her skating wh- wherever she skates and whatever she skates so I know a lot of people for a long time have wished that she would do dance, but she's some, and I could see her doing that, but I could also see her being a 
fantastic uh, solo dance. Oh, that's so, I'm just, I just feel so <laughs> well, Laura, you and I are on the same wavelength. But I, <laughs> yeah, no, her skating is just, it's just so beautiful. And uh, that, that dance, you know, option was thrown around her and she did have a tryout, I think with Shingo once, um, but, uh, but, you know, she has so many opportunities to do many different things and her younger sisters and the, you know, the TV movie, you know, business as well. And so she has so many options. So I think it's all what she wants to do, what she wants to do with her life. Yeah. Most important. Definitely. Yeah. Um, James saying, still haven't got over my <laughs> Mr. Grinch SP. <laughs> no. Thanks, I love Kevin. that music and uh, I didn't know if she'd be able to pull it off or not. Bahamut has said okay and so I was like okay let's go for it. Um, I think she was still a little bit shy performing it um, but it's such a fun cool piece of music. It's not typical and I think that's what I loved about it. She was junior. She was still young so I wanted some fun music <laughs> for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that was a while ago, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I I looked it up. It was I like I couldn't remember it, and then I think it was the year before COVID. Oh, really? So that's oh, why the year before COVID. I oh think it's, uh, I think she did it at the Youth Olympics, which would be four yes. years from yeah, now. Four, okay, yeah, I think it's about yeah four yeah four years so ago. Then at again, least. it does feel like a decade ago. It does before. feel like it. COVID. I don't know why, but yeah, it does feel like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so we do have another question. Um, the pressure of participating in Japanese nationals, as I've mentioned by the skaters, is it partially because they know each other so well? Sometimes it's more difficult performing in front of family and friends. I don't think it's that. I mean, I think everyone, yes, everyone does know each other um, very well. And they know what other skaters are capable of. So of course, maybe they may feel like that pressure of skating well because others are going to skate well. But I think it's more about the pressure that they put on themselves to be able to perform the best that they can. Um, because in the end, you can't worry about, you know, what the other skaters are doing or what, how the judges are going to judge. You know, the only thing you can focus on and and control is is yourself and your your performance. And so. I think the pressure comes from within and that's for every every skater every team um that's at least what i see um when i'm there um yeah to perform to perform the their best and show what they're capable of at the time when it counts so it's a lot it's a lot <laughs> Um, I'm going to slightly amend Laura's question of, do you think, so the dance could be an option for Marin, is do you think um, some skaters that maybe aren't the best or aren't confident with jumps, but still have beautiful skating um, within like the singles that have just competed, do you think mm. they might be interested in switching over to solo now the ISU are, are putting it forward as an, an international competition? I hope. I mean, still solo dance is not popular in Japan. So we have it at small local competitions, um, which are very few in Japan. We have a total of one, two, three local competitions a year, a season in Japan. <laughs> and then plus that uh, they're nationals or sectionals. Um, there's no regionals because there's just not that many uh, dance teams or solo dancers to begin with. Um, but uh, from what I've seen around the world and um, from what ISU was doing as well, and the rules I've, I've read, I've, I've also read about solo dance rules and it's exciting, it's fun. It's basically like ice dance, but just solo and you're still able to do all those fun stuff, twizzles, step sequences and stuff like that and in you know, different dance styles. So I, I hope that, can, that could be a, an option in the future for, for Japan, for their skaters. Um, because yeah, there are a lot of skaters who are talented, but just maybe their jumps aren't there and they fizzle out and they quit. And um, it's sad to see that that talent go away. Um, but uh, you really want to be, um, you know, what attracts them to skating is the individuality of yeah. the, being a you know solo athlete. Then 
that you're, if they're not as interested in the partnered aspect of it, um, then that might be a way to do yeah, it. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's interesting to see like some of the top solo dancers in the U.S. are people yeah. that I think could get a partner if they wanted one. Like they get to once they're like somebody like um, Brooke, whose last name is escaping me, was like the national champion, is uh -huh. so amazing. Oh, wow. Like she wants to be doing solo dance like that's the thing that she's passionate about and she's amazing i've seen her perform live a couple of times and it's um you know truly like world-class level skating mm -hmm. but it's different so yeah yeah no it is different but it it's it's exciting to watch too and uh i didn't really know about it or study it until um as Azusa used to teach her before she teamed up with Shingo and before she left to to skate with Shingo she I made an um, exhibition program for her for Bloom on Ice and mm -hmm. it was to like some Latin music I wanted something fun for her to move but I wanted to choreograph it in a way that it would be for like solo dance um, I didn't want to just make any random exhibition number so I put all different types of footwork, I put a choreo step, I put twizzles, I put like spirals and in, in replace of the lifts and stuff and um, to like read up on those rules, I'm like, oh wow, this is super exciting. This is fun to to teach. This is fun to choreograph. Like this is fun for skaters to perform. And she performed the hell out of it. Like she loved it, and and it made her shine. And Shingo saw that performance, and he contacted her, and that's how they teamed up. So I'm so glad. Like um, ISU was considering that as an option for for skaters, um, especially since there's so many talented skaters. But you know. They can't, you know, compete because they don't have a partner and that's like not fair. So, and uh, to see also my sister go through the struggles of trying to find the partner that she could, you know, show her, her skills to the world with, like it's, it's, it's tough. So I, I hope that this will become an option in Japan. I don't know if it will be anytime soon, but, um, but I hope, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um Mikhail mentioning Lila Fear started her career as a solo dancer and then switched to regular ice dance. Um, I think I was looking into it over the weekend and uh, Olivia Smart did like, mm -hmm. back in like I think 2008-2009. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been going on in the UK for a really long time. A long time. Um, yeah. yeah and it's um, you know they the, have uh, nationals as well now. Was a solo dancer for a while. Okay. Um, yeah so it's it's been it's been going on for years so why not have solo dancers compete that should be a discipline it should <laughs> because it's actually hard to do all that stuff by yourself it really is <laughs> so and it's and it's fun and exciting to watch i think also will give fans more of an opportunity to watch dance understand the rules too you know so um yeah why not yeah, it makes total sense to me. It's like, you know, you've got singles and pairs and then solo dance and partner dance, like feel like they, that should, yes. you know. Yes. And then, and then synchro. But like, I do wonder about, you know, as we keep, ex I love that we keep expanding more disciplines and I wish that they um, could be a little bit more integrated with each other at competitions too. Mm -hmm. Like we had that conversation with some people who do synchro where it's like the fact that they're on a totally different competition schedule, like yeah. for fans anyway, it's harder to get exposed Hard. to it. Yeah. And I think it would be a shame if like solo dance is also like, there are some competitions at least like in the US that have solo and partner dance at the same domestic competition oh, okay. Hope, okay i hope there will continue to be more of that because it's are their nationals different from like dance nationals their nationals are held at a different time and almost at a different they're held i think almost on the same time or similar time as the collegiate nationals like i have to i have to, have to look that up but it's definitely not at the um they're not being held in January it's okay. like the nationals were like <clears throat> I want to say like over the summer it's a very different oh, really? schedule oh wow um but um mm. but there were um like at some of the competitions that were like qualifying competitions for U.S. nationals I was seeing that like I don't know, like at Lake Placid there were both solo dance and partner dance mm -hmm. um competitions happening um within the same event and so like I hope there's more of that because like I had never really heard of it or, or seen it until mm -hmm. like there being um a couple of the really 
great ones um like train in like new jersey and they will sometimes come up and sh skate in shows in like new york and boston and so like mm -hmm. i would occasionally see people and it was like oh that's the national champion in solo like i just had not been aware <laughs> okay, of it until cool. seeing them so i see yeah. i see so it's like that structure of competition thing even though competitions are long and it's hard to integrate more disciplines into yeah, the I know. Yeah. there's a lot of things involved i'm sure but uh but i think it's really something to look into something for you know for skaters to 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 compete in to try and to expand our sport more and you know give also our fans more things to watch <laughs> and more things to study and learn about and talk about which is which is good so yeah i hope i hope <laughs> um i think it's time to move on to the men men's <laughs> Yes, this um, was a very exciting event to watch. <laughs> Our eyes were glued to the television <laughs> for the short. For the free, I was there. Uh, for the short, I was watching on television. But, uh, but like, wow, the talent here is just insane. It's just through the roof. Um, such high level of skating. So many difficult jumps in the programs. Difficult programs, choreography to begin with um such artistry on the ice like just wow um i mean shoma he's been in the game for a long time he's been through all these different types of pressure so to deliver wonderful clean performances like he did is just amazing just amazing i mean i knew that he would pull through but you know to see it constantly at almost every event too is just it's just um, amazing to see, amazing to see. His strength yeah. physically and mentally is just unparalleled, I think. Um, and uh, yeah. It's amazing because like he hasn't had the, like the season last year where he won everything. And this year it's like, he's this is the first actual like <laughs> gold that he's got in this yeah. season. But despite that, he's been like, he's been really good and really- He's been good. Like his performance is- Other yeah. people have been going up and down. And yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. He's- his performances, his jump. I mean, I'm not a jump technician. I don't really know jumps very well. But like to me, watching, he's improving all, every competition, but also skating consistently at every competition. So whether he wins gold or not, like you know, I think that's out of his control. But you know, he's doing what he needs to do is consistently skate well and show his his abilities. So um, yeah, so I'm I'm glad he won nationals. He deserved to win nationals, of course, hands down. Um, and Yuma, I love his skating. I love his, his jumps are beautiful, big, just clean, just great to see and love his programs too, um, this season and, uh, yeah, just a lot of talent there and, uh, saw Carolina here as well. And she was super excited to be there when, and working with him. And so, um, I think that, you know, she's helped him as well develop and mature and um you know last season he had a rough season because he came out of injury and he didn't skate well at nationals so um i'm really glad that he could bounce back and skate have a great season so far and so um it's great to see him bounce back for yeah, sure. he's amazing and i also feel like if this is where he is now the like the quality that he could have in a he's couple of years from now, now is just yeah. like I'm so like I really I really love him now, but I'm also just like so excited to see yeah. the trajectory. He's still so he's young, so I mean it's you know you're gonna just gonna see better things. I think only better things, and he has such drive and such you know strength mentally to like push through and deliver. Um, yeah. yeah, just to see him practice out on the ice too, like he's just he's just in it, in it. So, I'm so um, great to see. to see them at yeah. um to uh, yeah to see both of them at worlds um because i haven't actually ever gotten to see yuma live and shoma not since okay. 2018 so um for i'm they're probably the skaters that i'm the most excited about yeah um, yeah getting to experience live this season no yeah so for sure coming into the event i knew that shoma and yuma were on the podium um, so the third spot was the was the question to me, like who was gonna who's gonna grab it. Um, but when I was watching the free and 
the last group, every skater just skating so well and just going for it and not holding back and having, you know, great performances one after another. And I'm like, how do you, I don't know, like, how do you decide who goes, who doesn't? Like, this is like the worst, like, I don't want to be responsible for that. Like, there's just so much talent here. Uh, it was just so, it was it was just, it was wonderful to see, but it was also so heartbreaking to see as well. Um, but Sota, he skated amazingly, both short and free, like flawless. Like, and uh, I didn't expect it. I think I, um, I think I expected Kao to be third. I, I, you know, he's had a strong season so far, but he was, I think, sick at the final, and he still hasn't fully recovered. So, um, uh, so, but I. You know, I'm still glad that he was still named to the world team. I think that was the right decision. But Sota skated amazingly. Like, he just, he skated the best he could. He just delivered it. And uh, so I'm glad that he he was on the podium at Nationals. He deserved that. Yeah. Yeah. There's really this sort of solidification of this, like, top six right now. Yeah. That are all so amazing. And I really would yeah. want to see them, you know, because... I think you you know you're absolutely right about sort of who was who overall this season has been in the top three yeah. and then sort of this next group. But it's not like last year at nationals where everyone was have was up and down. That was was that was a mess. And, that was hard. That was I mean, hard for the federation. Had been inconsistent <laughs> over the course of the season a lot more last yeah. year than this year. So yeah. it was sort of this is this um, this is really tough. And then I um, because I'm a big fan of. Goshira Shimada, who I always want to be breaking into that yeah. group, then I'm like, I'm so amazed and I love this top six. But then there's a part of me that was like, oh, oh, well, okay, well, this I is not going to be. I especially love his free this season. I think it's a masterpiece. Uh, suits him so well. I mean, I just had such a, a, you know, I've just been so used to seeing him skate Charlie Chaplin. So for for him to skate this this program to Dance Macabre, like I just transformed and he hit every note and he became that character. And it's just such a beautiful program. Um, but yeah, it was just, uh, it was unfortunate. He couldn't skate, you know, the performances he wanted to here, but it's just mm -hmm. such a, such a hard competition. Um, yeah, it's just, just I, very I, I completely I understand. Like, yeah, <laughs> he, shouldn't, he shouldn't be too hard on himself because this event is like, oh, it's hard. And uh, and it was and, like the luck of it hit last year. The, everything aligned. Yeah, and it happened, everything aligned and, and just had the performance of his life there. Yeah. So yeah. I, I am wondering if he might keep this free skate for a second year because he's been kind of on a pattern of doing like one change and one, one keep changing change one. Another, and, yeah. yeah. And that was certainly in the past because he hasn't had as much competitive opportunities. Yeah. But and that's the reason why. Yeah. But I really think that this free skate could keep growing for him a I lot. Think so too. Um, it's a good one. And yeah. I, when I asked I asked Stefan about it because I was kind of surprised that it was like he was choosing something that was dark for Kushiro because yeah. Kush, yeah. yeah. was such a bright personality, but he was like, but he's an actor. Like that's yeah. the thing that he can do. So give yeah. him a character and exactly. I really see it. as long as he has a character, he he'll make it come alive. And uh I think that's his talent. And uh and that was, that's a, that's what makes him unique as well. And uh yeah, so whenever he skates, I can't take my eyes off of him. Like, it's just mesmerizing. Yeah, so, yeah. No, beautiful skater, for sure. Um, but, yeah, the skaters in that in that last group, Kazuki, he also skated so well. Like, uh, love his free program, too. It's a, it's a different direction to what he's used to. Um, but when I heard the story about it from Misha and how they both, you know, settled upon it, like... Um, I totally fell in love with it and just really felt all the emotions inside um, watching him. And so, um, yeah, it's unfortunate, but um, it's just so many great skaters. It's just hard. It's just hard. Yeah. And I've also kind of felt for Shun because Shun, I think yeah. he's made big improvements this year, but has gotten, <laughs> be because he, he hasn't been at that top he's yeah. been a little bit he's always just um, under right under just right under them <laughs> and it's yeah. hard i think because, his, i think his time's gonna come i can i, I guess so. he's, he's uh because I, I saw him a couple of times in competition last year and then this year and i i really did feel like he was um 
there's a, a kind of a big difference, not seeming quite so much like a, a junior. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm. No, he totally like changed and matured this season. Um, his programs are beautiful and really show his strength and abilities. Um, and, and yeah, this competition, he just skated well. He skated great. He skated, like I said, the best, best he could. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, at least he's still going to four continents. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I know he's like always just like right under the top skaters and it's just, it's a hard place to be. It really is. Ah, uh, but just so much talent there. Just so much talent. I really think um, we need some kind of a rule change to allow for there to be wild cards for worlds. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I started. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm now serious. I was started I'm looking all for that. I mean, because um, I really want to know. Uh, so that makes the competition think, more exciting for sure. Like, I mean, you know, whether you know there could be different ways of doing it, but the thought that I was having was. You could have, um, if you looked at the season's best list, for example, mm -hmm. and if a country had more than three skaters in the top 10 or more than three skaters in the top 12 or something like that, you could say, you know, you get an extra spot. And so there would just be like a little bit of a like, you know, pressure release valve for yeah, the, yeah. these situations where like it's not, um, you know, th then there it gives... Um, and and maybe it's not you know maybe it's not only by federation or something but there's but I think that could be one way of doing it. and if that was the case you would yeah. get four spots there are four Japanese men in yeah. the top ten that'd be um, cool I mean it also makes you know it gives another country another chance to send another skater but it also pushes athletes to yeah. to do better so that they can send as many a, a lot of skaters from one country to an event so. Right. Why well, not? and I was thinking if it was top, I was also I was looking. I was like, oh, if it was top twelve, you'd get, um, you know, that would mean that, uh, the only other two that you know was like, okay, well, let's see. So it, you know, it was like Italy could get four pair teams, which sure, <laughs> I'd send, they they have a good fourth team. I'd send their fourth team. Yeah, like, yeah, the US yeah. could have four dance teams. Also, seems very valid with a ballet. Yeah, yeah. And, and also that it, you know, it starts to put, you know, and then Canada is right at the threshold of having four dance yeah. teams as well. And we yeah. have been complaining about Canada not sending their skaters to yeah, enough competitions. Exactly. But it's like, yeah. so, you know, trying to think like, you know, what the implications of something like that could be. Yeah. It pairs th with the Japanese team is a great example also of, um, well, what do we do if there's a, if a country's not able to fulfill, to yeah. use all of its spots? Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. That's exactly. been a conversation that I think may be more likely that there might be some change um, around that. Mm -hmm, and I, mm -hmm, when we looked mm -hmm. at that last year, the weird situation of like Japan not being able to use all three spots <clears throat> and then Italy only having one spot for Worlds because of their teams getting COVID the year before. And so yeah, like they're, they're, you get to these yeah. weird things where yeah, like, I know, like, I know. Like, like overall, I think country limits are reasonable. I don't think it's like, it should just be, you know, no federation yeah season, yeah but, i know like i want to tweak around the edges for these situations where it really seems so hard <laughs> it's hard it's just complicated and hard and of course every year it's different different situations and uh yeah it's hard to say but it's an interesting it's an interesting idea for sure a wild card I like that <laughs> That's you know that that if you know and anybody wants to take take that up you know I assume the Japanese Federation <laughs> would love that love that idea oh, because the decision after oh, after when national finishes is just always uh it's just always hard it's always hard we were waiting till like midnight that night for what they decided you know it was uh it was uh that's a hard it's a hard decision to make yeah. yeah. I was glad that they were more, it seemed like um, a little bit more transparent about what the criteria were in the process. Well, that was because of last, last nationals yeah. and all the, that, <laughs> uh, yeah, the mess of that. So um, they wanted to clarify what the criteria would be into making the decision and what they're taking into consideration. So um, yeah, I'm glad that they did that. They, they needed to say that. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Um, some comments that we got 
echoing the last group of insane. men. I, I, like, I know. I hear you. It was insane for me watching it as well. I mean, and the crowd was just, you know, standing up like every performance. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like performance and performance of like fantastic skates. Uh, it was insane. It was insane. Japanese Nationals is, is a very exciting event to watch. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so... Yes, he um, was. And I really yeah. saying that yeah. Shimmer was glorious. Yeah. Um, my heart was in my mouth for that last group, and they all did great. The last couple of skaters in the second to last group set, the Baha'i, and the final six were phenomenal. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, uh, yeah, my, you know, yeah, like my heart felt like in my, in my throat. Like I was just wishing every skater to skate well. And, uh, and, uh, but yeah, it's 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 heart it's heart wrenching it's heart wrenching to watch as well because <laughs> even if they do skate well and they they're not on the podium it's just it's hard it's rough yeah um, um and I just do you want go on <laughs> um I was just gonna give um a, a, a shout out to uh, Kosho Oshima. Um, for his short program, I didn't expect it and I loved it. And it was just a very fun one. I've been able to rewatch because someone posted it on Twitter. So um, I've been enjoying rewatching that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's fun. <laughs> Were there other skaters sort of outside of that top group that um, stood out to you, Kathy? <laughs> uh, for men's? Yeah. Uh, well, there's one that I choreographed for. Um, uh lucas lucas honda i mean it was his last uh yeah we talked about it earlier it was his last um uh, uh year doing singles and so and he's had a rough few seasons like his jumps jumps weren't there and um and uh i talked with him uh during practice before the short i think i asked him how was the short i mean how was the practice and he was like it wasn't good <laughs> but then i heard later from his singles coaches it was like he he went into practice, but he didn't do any pair stuff before that. And he's so used to doing pairs in the morning and then doing singles later in the afternoon and not having that pair warm up of doing lifts, twists, doing off ice on the floor. Like, I guess it was mm. different. And so at the competition, because Saya was there, he was doing off ice lifts and stuff on, you know, trainings on the floors with her before he skated. So I don't know if that helped contribute that, but um but uh, he skated both programs well and uh, made me cry. So, yeah, I think that that touched me pretty much. Um, who else? Uh, so many great skaters, so many. Um, sorry, Allison's calling me. Can't talk to you right now. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Uh, who else? Yeah, I thought there was um, that Tetsuya Suboy did very well oh, yes. here. Oh. Um, I yes. enjoyed him quite a bit as well. Yeah, I mean, he's also had a rough, you know, season last year and, and this year too. Like his, yeah, just his jumps were kind of up and down, but he skated so well here. He skated so well. Um, I actually haven't seen his Grand Prix skate. So to see him for the first time here at nationals and skate so well, like I was like, Oh, wow. Okay. And he's mm -hmm. also definitely matured. You know, um, I went to his last junior worlds where he came third. I went with him there and to see that skate. And then here I was like, wow, he, he's changed a lot and he's doing good. And he's yeah. super talented. Like his jumps, his knee bend is insane. He reminds me a lot of uh, Nobunari Oda, <laughs> mm. I think uh, with his skating. I definitely see that. I saw him at, at Skate America and, you know, he he had mistakes in his programs and so yeah. his placement wasn't so high, but I, I really enjoyed him there. And um, it, he was sort of new, new to me, you know, yeah. just really paying attention to him. Yeah. So, yeah. That's great. Uh, who else? Um, uh, well, the skaters that I... I've choreographed for Shinsuke Nakamura. He didn't do so well in the free, but uh, he did. A, he skated a great short, and mm -hmm. that short he used for two years, and I love that short I made for him. Um, he skates that so well, so strong, and uh, I'm glad that he could skate it. Uh, 
well here. Um, who else? Uh, Amin, he's also a great skater. The, unfortunately, yeah, this Nationals wasn't the best one event for him, but he's such an elegant skater. Um, also, Takumi Sugiyama is such an elegant skater as well. Um, but yeah, such such a diverse group of skaters with all different, you know, talents and skating styles. So it was um, even the prior event, the prior skaters that I saw, the prior groups, like it was still such a fun, um, fun event to see. Um, of course, the last group is is like super exciting, but like from you know from from the lower groups, like I, I know those skaters, I've seen them skate throughout the years and choreograph for quite a few of them too. So um, yeah, it was just great to see, great to see on <laughs> <Fun> event. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, but yeah. Will you, um, now that Nationals is over, I, you're gonna obviously have a, a significant amount of work with your your teams um do you also start does like the when does the choreography season start for you does that wait till longer in the spring or are some of these skaters like okay my season's um, done already thinking about the next so a lot of like the lower level skaters single skaters at our rink they finish their nationals um novice nationals are in october so mm. some of them also get um at request new choreography from me right after that event um, but some still have like competitions like local competitions after that so um i'm usually not that busy towards the end of the year but um definitely um from february march onwards i get busier because a lot of people request uh, choreography um but uh but yeah this time of year it's a little bit relaxing for me uh, i can take some time off which you know i am right now so yeah. i'm kind of grateful just to be home and uh also grateful not to put my feet in skates for a bit. <laughs> so um, I just think that time is also important. Um, but I'm also excited to get back to work too. And uh, yeah, get Utana and Masaya ready for, for continents. Uh, so um, yeah, just a lot of exciting things to come. Uh, both pair teams will, will train in Canada again before um, before uh, the next competition. So I'm glad that they can be with their coaches and to improve their their elements. So, yeah. And they'll need, an, they'll need um, minimums. Yes, yes. And so I think they'll be sent awesome. to, yeah, Bavarian, I think, to get their minimums. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll see, we'll see. I hope, yeah, I hope they're, yeah. they'll be able to get it, yeah. To get it. <laughs> That's great. Um, I think we've addressed all the comments as well. We just, I just want to throw this one up um, from Daniel Twish. Thank Alison, you. good luck at European. I know. I hope so. I mean, with it being in Lithuania, you know, it's such an exciting event for her, for them. And so um, I pray it's a bit earlier. So this year, so um, the season. So yeah, usually Alison can come home like during, you know, Christmas, New Year's, but this time she can because she has to get ready for Euros. So um, fortunately I won't see her now, but I saw her at, you know, Golden Spin at NHK. So I'm grateful to see her um, those two times. So I just, yeah, I, I hope that uh, it's a good event for them and that they can medal. I hope. <laughs> they have one of my favorite rhythm dances of the season. No, they're it's so them too. It's so them. Like uh it's one of my favorites too. Uh and the costumes just make it all that uh that rock and roll and uh and uh flamboyant. Like I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to see them. I'm going to Europeans, so it's gonna be Oh cool. Oh, okay. That's great. That's great. No, yeah, with it being in Lithuania is, is also great too. So I'm just great that uh, it's in their home country. Yeah. Yeah. I saw last year when um, Turkila and Verslis won their yes. bronze in yes. Helsinki, and the crowd yes. was just like had going 
bonkers. Like I everyone was, like, waving flags and screaming. And so like, I really like Lithuanian crowd, like bring that energy. Yes, like, I, I hope so. Also. Because that event was, uh, that was something. And uh, yeah, it was hard because, you know, of course I'm rooting for my sister, but I, I also love the Finnish team too. And uh, it was that third spot and both teams skated well, but you know, with it being Finland and they and the Finnish team skated so beautifully, like, yeah, it was just hard. It was hard, but I'm super proud of her and Sol for pulling that performance off with that pressure. And so- They were uh, great last year. Great. I great. um I was, they were the team that I never actually got to see them perform their performances because they were always in the like the part where I was running up and down the stairs oh. <laughs> in the mix zone and watch and like and the rink in Helsinki you have to like run around outside through the snow no way really oh. so it was it was a lot of um it was a lot of running around but so That's I only hard. ever saw them practice and not in the actual um event so I'm but this year I'm I'm and prioritize yeah, like, no, it's funny, this season they're, they're doing so well you know able, you know able to medal at their grand prix and then you know medaling winning zagreb and so they're they're on a roll so i just hope they can keep that up and uh, <laughs> yeah i really hope they have a great event uh euros i really do yeah yeah, no, yeah i have a good feeling yeah yeah <laughs> they're working hard and they're doing so well and um yeah no i hope so i hope so <laughs> uh, we'll also have um, an interview coming out with Alison and Sol this week or next week, probably next week. Yeah, she told me yesterday um, that she had an interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our um, fifth member is me. I uh, interviewed them yesterday. Oh, so cool. That will be coming out nice. next week sometime. Okay, cool. I look forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got another comment for you. This is the most exciting time for Japanese ice dance and a lot of it is due to Kathy's contribution. Oh, Thank you. Uh, so, so much for all you do and hope everyone stays healthy and the best of luck to oh, all the team. Thank you. That's very sweet to hear. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of work and uh, um, I'm just doing my best and I don't have that many teams. I hope I, I will have more in the future, but uh with the teams that I do have and the teams that I've, I've helped create. I, I, I hope that they are able to perform and to stay together and to do their best. I mean, um, I'm all for the future of Japanese ice dance. So yeah, <laughs> do my best. Ooh, another question. Um, would you like to do choreo for Alison and Sol <laughs> if you haven't done it before? Oh, I've never done that before. Uh, of course, I would love to one day. Uh... <laughs> Don't know if they'd be interested. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> well, maybe like a fun exhibition or something I'd be down to do. Um, but dance choreography is hard. It's very, very hard. Uh, it's still something that I'm, I'm working, I'm working on. Um, for low, lower level teams, like I can, I can handle. But for for Utana Masaya this season, I knew that I needed help. I needed input, and so. That's why I worked with Caitlin for their rhythm and then Massimo, I worked with him for their free. Um, so it's something that I still need, I guess, more confidence in. I don't have the most confidence in yet, but uh, yeah, There's I'm so really- many choreographic teams. I was thinking like so many of the, the schools have you know what even if there's one person listed as the choreographer, there's so often it is like it's Maybe a team effort. Technical, yeah. you know, it, is. So, yeah. it is, but at my rink, I'm the only choreographer. So it's just me. So it's, you know, I, I, I want to be able to learn more. I want to bounce ideas off of people. Like I want to work with people to choreograph, to make something. And I think that's the best way, you know, um, and that's what they do in Montreal. And, uh, and I think that is such a cool thing. And, uh, I kind of wish I had that here and I don't, but when we're able to bring choreographers to Japan and if I can work with them, that's, mm -hmm. that's great. That's I, I learn a lot more. And so, um, yeah, hopefully I'll have, I'll improve my choreography and have more confidence in the future. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. And I told you this before, but I really love the choreography that you've done for the Paris skaters. I think oh, it's really, it's thank really you. Fun. I love, I love choreographing Paris. Yeah. But for that too, I wish I had someone to bounce ideas off of, but, uh, but uh, yeah, choreographing Paris is a lot of fun. A lot, a lot less rules to think about than for ice dance. So uh, a lot more things that I, I could just like try whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, 
I really enjoy like selecting different types of music for specific type of people, you know, people and teams like that. I really enjoy doing so. Um, but yeah, getting choreography done with with someone would be is uh, is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to do. So hope for more opportunities. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if we have um, any other nationals news to discuss. I think Lois had. Um, I mean, we're going to recap too. stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that, you know, there's a lot of nationals that have happened. So, yeah, a lot of happen. nationals going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's been so much going on. It's a busy um, month. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess the most dramatic one was probably the Spanish ice dance. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah Olivia and Tim won uh, and didn't originally get any assignments, and now the Spanish Federation have changed yeah. their mind and given them worlds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's probably the most dramatic thing that's happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah recently. I heard about that. Oh, it's rough. That's rough. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think the split makes a lot more sense though. I did wonder about the the way they have it. I don't know. It's it's tough because it seems like part of the logic is not just like which team deserves to go, but also like what are the what's the best chance of like maximizing for two spots in exactly. the future? And that that's... has to be considered, you know, the federation does yeah. consider that. I think Part, part of what their decision to change their minds was because obviously it probably would have been more helpful for them for spots to send um, Olivia and Tim to Europeans and then send Sophia and Asaf to Worlds if they wanted to split it. But I think the resolution to changing their minds is that Olivia and Tim already train in Canada and Worlds are in Canada. Canada. So it, uh, it costs nothing to send them there. Right, true, true, true. <laughs> True, it does. It does. Ah, uh, but it's yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard decision to, <laughs> to make. But uh, yeah, they have to think. They have to take every criteria into consideration before making a decision like that. And uh, just going off of TES from past competitions in the season, and with all those competitions being completely different, different panels, different levels of competition, yeah. like that, to me is that to me is not right like that's hard to compare um and like if you're gonna weigh any internationals that you know are not the grand prix then make it challenges yes like yeah. if you if you pick a random like, competition that, that happens like... in december it's it's the, the scoring was crazy at bosphorus yeah. cup exactly. like <laughs> using using the scores from there isn't yeah. really indicative of what you teams are yeah, usually going to be scoring can't go off of that alone like that's not that's not fair to me um but yeah. because it seems like either you want to know how are the teams doing when you actually are comparing them with the same judging panel or at least how are they doing at like the closest proxy to the level of competition you're yeah. sending them to like that's so how yeah. they do <laughs> at right well how they do at nationals where it's high yeah. pressure or how they do at a the whatever their biggest international competitions yeah. have been. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough. I, um, yeah, I'm, yeah. And that's another, like, like, people are, like super, you know, <laughs> make the criteria super clear ahead of time. Like, yeah, they just like, yeah. Like notified everyone like a month before or something. I heard like I, yeah, I think it I, came out in like November or something. Yeah. And by that point, you can't even sign up to like oh, yeah, exactly. Like, you can't even do be. another challenger. Yeah, I know. That's not fair too. So I yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> actually a lesson learned for the federation at least. Yeah, <laughs> I I hope uh, I hope they've learned from this. Like this is uh yeah this was. This was talked about quite a bit <laughs> by a lot of people. So yeah, I mean, and from everything that when I when I interviewed Olivia and Tim earlier, it sounded like you know the Spanish Federation really you know went out of their way to recruit them and make sure that they like would compete for Spain and like oh, really? try to support oh, them, like because they were I mean they were in talks with both the German and the Spanish Federation and yeah. both really wanted them, but ultimately it was like the German Federation couldn't really like. They're just the funding situation in Germany is really yeah, bad. I heard that and they have, uh, yeah, have a hard so time. So the Spanish with team was able to give them more support. And so then that made sense. And like, I mean, and I've, obviously it's like some of this is what you say, but Olivia really did say like, you know, she wanted to, she liked that, you know, she was going to be able to 
stay competing for Spain and like hopefully of course you know, yeah. and they had you know like Spain's been really good for me and yeah. like so let's and the fact that both teams retired right away so it's like let's continue growing it and so yeah, like yeah. I hope that like this whole situation doesn't turn it to something that is yeah that's yeah. like negative or it just goes the wrong negative, way you know? yeah after yeah. everything that you know that you know that that olivia's done for spain and and vice versa the federation has supported for her like i just yeah i just hope that you know i don't know the fact that you've got sarah hotado like with the school now growing in spain and growing teams is like also really great and we want to support like that exactly she's doing so well with kirill i saw kirill after a long time he was in zagreb Mm -hmm. so to see him again and to see them doing so well together and developing you know, many Spanish teams, couples, and, you know, having a really, really good school there. Like, it's so, that's so exciting too. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm rooting yeah, for both. Second. Like, I, I love, you know, both of them. So it's hard. Oh, it's hard. And they have a second Lithuanian team as well. So yes, yes, yeah. That's, they moved that's, to there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if there's any other. Yeah. Um, Mateo, maybe. Mateo uh, missing nationals and needing hip surgery after Europeans. Yeah, that that was a blow, especially considering yeah. he already started the season with an injury as well. It's just yeah. not been mm, his year. And this flat. was his year to be the number one again. Like, yeah, I know. Because obviously Daniel's gone. Um, but yeah, it's. It's That's a shame. Rough. I mean, I imagine, I assume they have two spots for Worlds. Um, so I assume that's going to be Nikolai and Gabriel, because I don't think Corey's released yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, so th- those those would probably be the two options for mm-hmm. Worlds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, that makes sense. I mean, and that's, um, it's tough given, you know, they've got this strong, this strong field, but um, I was, yeah, it was a rough Italian nationals between that and the fact that like half, like half of the people who train in Bergamo all got like the flu or something. Flu, oh, really? like, that, oh my god! Um, because you had yeah, Sara Sara Conti got it, and oh, that's why they didn't skate. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah Alessa Tornaghi got it as well. Like, wow. it was, like everyone was coming down with it. Oh, that's horrible yeah. timing. Oh. Yeah, it was. It seemed very rough. Like the mm-hmm. fact that, um, and I, I feel like between after that, and then like the fact that half the Italian pairs all gave each other COVID af- after, um, oh yeah, the Olympics as well. I yeah. just was like, oh That's no, true. like it's it's great having this like wonderful training center. With everyone spending all their They're time all great together, together. but me also was also not, maybe not a good thing. <laughs> well, I think. Uh, Minerva Haas has been ill as well. Like they were supposed to do a show. I mean, they did nationals because obviously Annika and Robert still recovering from injury. But so they did nationals and there was another um, lower ranked team with them. But I think she was still ill while she was competing there and she was ill afterwards and they were supposed to do a show event and pulled out of that. So everyone's everyone's suffering right now. <laughs> yes, hopefully oh. everyone be pleased. Like be healthy for Europeans. <laughs> <Yeah. Please. laughs> <No. laughs> Oh, yeah. really, it really is true. Just, yeah, just be careful, be healthy, but uh, it's hard. Yeah, I would love to see, I mean, I say this and I'm not always following it myself, but like, I would love to see there be um, more masking in the European competitions. Like, just because it's, it just seems like you're all, it's, everyone's I mean, just, everyone's it's annoying, just, just like, I know it's yeah. annoying, but like, it's a precaution. I mean, even, I mean, even you know the COVID is go- you know pr- mostly gone. It's not like some. It's not on everyone's mind at the moment. But uh, when I travel, I always I just always wear a mask. Like I just it's just a normal thing, normal reaction for me to do. It's just you know you're in class, close proximity with people. You know you just wanna just just for yourself just to be healthy. And I also want my students to be healthy. I don't want to make my students sick either. Like I would feel like shit if I did. So. <laughs> um, I just think that it's just, I guess, you know, if you're all coming to an event, like that's the smart thing to do no? <laughs> so for everyone to stay healthy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I always, I 
I was thinking about that and, you know, talking to people in the mix zone. And last year, I felt like I could, like multiple skaters were like, yeah, I'm here, but I'm sick. And they're like coughing on me. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, I, yeah, I mean, it's all, it, it, it all, it is what it is, but it's, yeah. it is, uh, hopefully yeah. everyone will be, will be healthy. Um, yeah. And then we have uh, Nina Petropina who broke her leg at uh, Golden Spin and she probably would have been a medal favorite for the European women's podium. So that oh, her leg? For her. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. And, like, mm -hmm. obviously she was the first Estonian to win a medal on the Grand Prix this year, so it would have been really oh, probably geez. really good competition for her. No, I didn't I didn't know she put her leg. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Yeah, that That's was rough. Oh. Um I feel like a lot of the other nationals have been fairly predictable. I mean I feel like there was some I know some people were um looking at the um Lara Naki Gutman and Anna Pazetta and like the all of the Italian mm -hmm. women. Yeah. But like it seemed it seemed yeah. reasonable to me the way it worked out, but like good that there's competition yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Like the thing that the only thing that would worry me is is because Lara has such trouble with the short that there is a risk that she might not make the free skate if it all goes wrong. Obviously, hopefully it doesn't. But that that is always the weaker program for her. So hopefully she's able to yeah. bring it on the day. Yeah, I mean, and she, you know, and on a good day, she has the potential to, you know, to secure more spots for Italy. So it's just like it's very, I'm, yeah. Hopefully, we'll be, um, we'll be good on on the day. Um, yeah, and I was happy for. I mean, even though it's because of unfortunately people being sick, I was still happy for um, Rebecca and Filippo to get their first national title. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're for, working for um, the It might. Yeah, I saw be that. Second, but they yeah. were here. They were here in Japan training before uh, mm -hmm. NHK, and it was really nice to meet them and to meet their coach uh, Rosie and. Uh, they were just such nice people, and uh, it was also great for them to share the ice with Yuna Sumi and Saya Lucas, and yeah. and just to see a great team right just skate and train right before your very eyes. And uh, yeah, they're incredible. Their throws are just out of this world. Like it's just insane <laughs> how high he throws her, and she lands them like oh wow, just a beautiful pair couple. And such nice yeah. people too. So yeah, I, I'm I'm so happy that they they won their nationals that's great yeah um and our friend Corey with his first italian national medal oh, yes. his, his bronze <laughs> which uh was, was nice and i i appreciated that he had a post an uh, instagram post all in italian thanking everyone for being so Aww. welcome to him and brian I so that. was like good good job that's you're sweet. coming <laughs> <That's> italian okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, obviously there was the slight drama with the uh, French nationals uh, which was a little bit well uncomfortable but not great to watch um yeah. finishing in seventh yeah um yeah hopefully there is redemption for him in the latter half of the season yes yes yeah he's such a talented skater and I know I mean there's a lot of pressure on him and you know with Adam being there too and he's such a phenomenal skater too um and I think it was also just, a, you know, competition one after another, very busy traveling back and forth. Like it was a lot mm -hmm. going on. And, uh, but yeah, to see those skates, it's kind of just like, oh, it's heartbreaking. And, and I, like, oh, I guess, yeah. You know that he's capable of doing, you know, doing more. So to see that it's, it's, it's tough, but I hope, yeah, I, both, I hope he can rest and just regroup um and, and come back stronger for euros yeah we'll see yeah. yeah what do you think about the nationals like it seems like there's like not a good timing to ever like i know no, there's no good time to have nationals like <laughs> no, no i haven't had christmas the, like, in like how many years now <laughs> i was like do you prefer the like before you know the before the in Dece the december or or a Jan or January because it's, like it's like the question of like, after the holidays, it's hard. Like, the holidays. I, I, as a skater, I, I prefer it before. Like I miss Christmas. It's okay. I'd rather do it before the holidays uh, than then after. But yeah, after all the Grand Prix, after the Grand Prix final or whatever, you know, challengers are skating or whatever. Like it's it's a lot, it's a lot. 
And uh, there were a lot of competitions in Asia this season too, you know, and so it's a, it's a lot for, for European or, or North American skaters. So to travel and to compete and be at their best, it's, it's a lot on the body and on the mind. So um, not easy, not easy. And nationals, you wanna, you always want to skate, you know, your best at your home country, but you're also the most tired, I think, by that point too. So, yeah, that's that's rough. Yeah, I did, um, you know, seeing the there are a couple of countries this year that um, are, were basically hosting small international events and then using those as their national championships. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was like. That is smart. You've just yeah. now given your fingers <laughs> like world standing points and, and <laughs> yeah, national. Yeah, Latvia, yeah. Latvia do that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like Netherlands do that as well. They use yeah. Challenge Cup as the yeah nationals. because they don't have many couples also to play yeah. with, and you know, kill yeah. two birds with one stone basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, was, I was seeing that. I was thinking like, ah, oh, okay, there. That that's a that was a, a smart. Smart choice that if you're yeah. going to have to make your skater come do a sort of pro forma um, nationals or something like that, then might as well yeah. figure out a way to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Dennis got, you know, a ratified quad out of it. So. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, not, yeah, it's, uh, that was, uh, was, was very exciting to see. So I, I'll, I'll take, I'll take it. It just can, we can just repeat that. Um, I like Laura's comment about the um, <laughs> the idea of doing uh, German, Austrian, and Swiss nationals, you know, together the way that the um, there's the four nationals. Yeah, four nationals. Yeah, Paul to do it. <laughs> some, I think there was a lot of juniors in the Swiss nationals this year, though. Like there was at yeah. least twenty odd. I was like, oh my god, there's so many junior women. Mm. <laughs> at the Swiss there are a lot of Swiss juniors um, oh, really? right now in the you junior. You can see why Marina Jews switched mm. to Italy. <laughs> yes. Um it was a it was a lot. Um and yeah it's an it's an interesting um yeah all of that's a, a, kind of an interesting dynamic seeing mm -hmm. who is emerging there and then who um is gonna um on the men's side um be able to step up as well because I they've got um more spots now thanks to how well that Lucas has done and mm -hmm. but not necessarily as much of the depth of the field behind that. Yeah, so. it was interesting that they didn't choose to use their second spot for Europeans. I, yeah, that, whenever countries don't use the spot. It, they, they do have criteria and I guess they just determined that none of the men really filled the criteria. Uh, Obviously, Naoki hasn't performed since the Junior Grand Prix. I don't know exactly why he missed nationals. Um, but all the other men there, there were two of them who had the minimums for Europeans and they just yeah. elected not to use them. I, yeah, that, That's hard. it just seems so hard on the skaters. It's like, yeah. well, how do yeah. you expect them? It's like, why are you holding that out as like, yeah, you know, instead of like, send them like, what? The, what, what I guess there's a chance that they could get three if they just have Lucas, but that's not, who's gonna reason feel, to, that's, that's not a reason to do it. That's not a reason to do it. If you don't let it. your skaters get the experience. Yeah. To, you know, yeah. They need yeah. to compete. That's the only way that they'll improve. They need those experiences. And yeah. I know there's a lot of other things going on, but like, you know, if you want your skaters to improve, if you want more skaters too, then you need to send them to competitions. <laughs> that's yeah. the only Me way. Too. Yeah. They need to feel like they're working towards something. Else. Exactly. There's, there's a exactly. reason for the, for the, all their work. <laughs> because just just one competition, one experience like that, skaters come back and they improve tenfold. It's just completely different. The mindset is different. The physicality is different. Like those experiences are really important. And uh, yeah, I I really hope that skaters are given the opportunity. Yeah, I have to jump for a, a two o'clock, but I just want to say it's thank fine. you so much, Kathy. It's been thank you. Really fun. Um, thank you for this great opportunity. It was a lot of fun talking to all of you. <laughs> loved it. Um, and to anyone watching who's um, going to be uh, who at Europeans, um, say hi if you see me. And um, if folks have ideas of 
skaters they want to hear from in the um, from the mix zone or anything, uh, definitely let us know. Um, I'll probably post a thread on Twitter about that at some point. But be excited to see. <laughs> yeah. Have a safe trip there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to Lithuania before, so I'm. This is going to be that's a, a new, exciting. A new country I've on the too, list. So, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that should be really exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's a good uh, point to wrap it up. Kathy, again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, thank you. And you're welcome back anytime. Thank you. I'm I'm here <laughs> whenever. So whenever you yeah, <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone Thank you for watching so as well. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.